In this video, let's take a look at how to set up authentication in our Next.js application using Auth0. Now, if you wanna follow along with the entire series, make sure to go back and check out the first video. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. Now we need to start to look at how do we add authentication and we'll do that with Auth0 and we'll talk about how to protect our routes, how to make sure that only the users that own a record can update or delete it. Want to make sure that a random person can update someone else's to-do. And then we also only want to show the to-dos that are relevant to a logged in user. So now let's go ahead and move over to Auth0 so we can get started setting up authentication inside of our Next.js application. All right, so we're gonna move over to Auth0 and I'll start off at just Auth0.com. And you'll need to create a free account. Auth0 has a really good free uh, tier that you can use and really do some good scaling with and it will work perfectly for this demo. So I have logged in here. If you're logging in or creating your account for the very first time, uh, there's a link below in the description for you to do so and you will uh, probably be prompted to go ahead and create a tenant as you start. Now I've got several tenants, so I'm gonna switch over to the one that I use, which is my James Q Quick demos. Now a tenant in Auth0 is basically a grouping of different applications. And you'll see in mine that I have lots of different applications in here. So I do lots of different tests and demos and things. So what we're going to do is create a new application and this thing will be uh, my Next.js authenticated app and this is an arbitrary name so you can kind of call that whatever you want and then in this case we're going to choose a regular web application now this is the interesting aspect of next.js is where it mixes server-side rendering static pages and then just kind of regular react but it's not a single page application in this case we're treating it from the authentication perspective as a regular web application so go ahead and, and click create there and then it's going to ask you, hey, what are you working with? And uh, we'll just kind of skip that. What we'll do is go over to the settings. Now, a couple of things that we will need here in a second are listed right here. You'll need the domain, the client ID, and the client secret. So what you'll want to do is open your ENV file that you had before, and you want to enter in those credentials. Let me go ahead and copy over the sample env file so let me go ahead and create that in here so i'll create a dot env dot sample and uh, if you didn't catch this earlier these are all of the credentials that you're going to need so at this point you should already have those three Airtable ones now you're going to need an all zero domain an all zero secret and a client id again those are coming from right here in addition you'll need a cookie secret now in this case you can just type in something random here that is at least 32 characters long uh, it doesn't have to be too specific for now, just as we're building this application out for testing. But you'll do that and you'll grab those three other client credentials and then you should be ready to go. So I'm going to give you a second to go ahead and do that. I will enter my credentials and then we'll continue to move on. Now that I've got that entered, one thing I want to make sure that we do before we forget, if you've been uh, checking this into source control, is we want to make sure those .env files get ignored. So you can see that certain env files are ignored we also want to add in the env these private credentials you never want to check into your source code so we'll just make sure that that thing is ignored here now alternatively you could have called this a env development uh, or local file and that would have worked too since we just used env we need to make sure that we ignore it so we've got those credentials in place now what i want to look at is the next js dash auth zero package which is what we're gonna to use to set up this authentication. You'll have a link to this in the description below as well, so you can go out and see the documentation. And we're basically just gonna kind of follow through what it says here. So the first part is to actually add this Auth0 Next.js package. So I'm going to copy that and then kill the existing server, go ahead and stop it, and then paste in this npm install and go ahead and install that package. And while that is uh, installing, we'll kind of scroll down and we'll look that there are two settings or two uh, URLs that we need to configure inside of the settings for our application inside of Auth0. And that is the callback URLs and the logout URLs or the allowed versions of both of those. And the way authentication works with OAuth2 is you have kind of this redirect where from the server, from Next.js, it's gonna redirect the user over to Auth0 the authentication uh, piece is going to happen where the user actually logs in. And then 
it's going to redirect the user back to somewhere and all zero needs to know where it should be allowed to redirect the user back to. So in this case, after the login happens, we're telling all zero, we want to redirect the user back to this callback endpoint. And then alternatively, if the user logs out, we redirect them back to our index route. So we need to add these inside of our application details. So we'll open this back up and just scroll down here. And the first one is our loud callback URL. So we'll paste in that callback there. And the second one is just the root of our application. So we'll paste this one into our law, our loud logout URLs. And then we'll want to make sure to scroll all the way down and save these settings. All right, now that we've got those things saved, now we need to actually create the configuration object inside of all zero. So what we're going to do is go ahead and add this inside of our utils directory inside of API. So here's our utils and then we'll add an auth zero JS file as well. All right. And then we'll take all of this code and we're basically just going to copy it in here for now. So let's copy and paste all of this in. And this might seem like a lot, but a lot of these properties that you see here, you can see are optional. These are not required because they actually have defaults. So that's okay. So what we want to do is update this thing. We're not using a config here, so we can get rid of that input. And then we can start to reference our environment variables from process.env dot auth zero domain. And then this one will be auth zero client ID. And then process.env dot auth zero client secret. And you see, we've got a redirect URI coming back to a callback endpoint that we haven't defined yet. And then we've got the post logout redirect URI, which matches what is inside of our auth zero credentials or our auth zero settings. And then lastly, we'll use the process.env cookie secret to populate that. All right, now that we have those environment variables set in here, you could look down at all of these other properties, but we don't really need to worry about them. Again, these are optional properties that have default values, so we don't have to worry too much there. One thing we might want to get rid of is this, this cookie domain. It's optional. We're not going to use this. And since it has a value that is not a default, we're going to get rid of that. So we'll just save this and you could get rid of the rest of these values, but this will work for now. So if we come back to our documentation, now that we have our all zero object set, now we can create our login and our logout and our callback routes. So we can really just copy and paste these and what we'll do is come back to our application and we'll come into our pages or our APIs actually, and we'll create the login JS file, and then we'll just paste that in. So notice this looks exactly like our, or very similar to our other ABI, API endpoints, where we've just got a function here. We're exporting a function that takes in a request and a response. And in this case, the beauty of this Aussie library is that it takes care of everything for us. So all we have to do inside of this function is call the Aussie handle login and Aussie takes care of the rest, which is really nice. The one thing we will have to change though, is since we are putting our Aussie file inside of a utils directory that is then inside of API, we'll need to uh, update this reference here to reference that appropriately. So this will actually just be a dot slash utils and then Aussie. So there is our login and then we will add our callback. So let's go ahead and grab that code. So here that is. And notice this is going to have a very similar format. I want to make sure that we update this import statement here. So very similar format. We export this function and then we let all zero object, this all zero package basically take care of the rest. So it's going to handle the callback, which really is um, updating the session and tracking the user and then redirecting the user back home. So we have that one. And then lastly, we can add the API for log out. So we'll add this file. And if we come back and then scroll down, we can get to this log out route down here. So let's paste this in. And then I will update this reference to be in the place that we have it inside of this utils folder. So there it is. That's all of the code that we need to write to be able to have this stuff uh, be set up for us. So now let's go ahead and close those tabs. And then we'll come back to our nav bar and inside of our nav bar, we're going to update those buttons to then send the user to those endpoints. And actually these things are already set. So with this stuff already set in place, those buttons are ready to go. If everything is set up correctly, we can go ahead and run NPM run dev. And now those login and log out buttons should work as we would expect. 
All right, looks like we're up and running. Let's open this tab again. Let's just do a refresh here. And we shouldn't see any changes directly. Now we can try this login. And hopefully what this will do is redirect us over to Auth0, but it looks like we have an issue here. And it's saying that our my client secret uh, is not provided. So let me double check my Auth0 configuration. And I think I just named this property Auth0 secret instead of client secret. So you might've caught that already. So I'm gonna uh, kill this and then restart it. And then hopefully that will take in the new environment variables and we'll be ready to go. All right, back on, just trying to refresh the homepage here as it's starting up. All right, so we're back on the homepage. Let's try the login. And what this will do is it will redirect this over to Auth0. And in this case, what it's done is it's already kind of auto-populated this with my Twitter account. Now you won't have this set up by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in and then I'm gonna choose to then test out the logout functionality here. So let's test this out and we should come back to the homepage. So it went kind of went to Auth0 and then it came back and now we're back on the homepage here. So let me try to log in again. And I wanna get to the point where you kind of see what it will look like for you. So again, I've got Twitter enabled here, but by default, you will see sign in with Google and you'll see a sign up form. So if you wanted to, you could use either one of those things. And in this case, I could use a sign up if I just type in my me email and then give this a password. I'll go ahead and click sign up. And uh, this is just making sure uh, that I'm granting access to this application to get information about my profile. So our application that we have created, this my Next.js authenticated app, is asking to get basic information about this user, which in this case is me logging in. So this should come back to the homepage. And the thing that you notice is, is we actually don't notice anything really different here. Everything really looks the same. So what we want to do is actually pass the user into this index route. And then if the user is there, we want to show and hide the login and logout buttons. So if we scroll down to our get server side props, one of the things that we can add is go ahead and grab the user from the, the context or the session that's in the context. So we can say const session and then we'll await auth zero dot get session. So we want to get session by passing in the context dot request or REQ. And in this case, let's just go ahead and log out this session. So this will log out on the server. So inside of this console. And the one thing we also want to make sure is that we actually import this auth zero thing. And it looks like we've already got this imported here. So that should be good to go. So I'll scroll down and I'll, let's just do a save. And if we refresh, so we come back over here and refresh, what we should see back in our terminal inside of VS Code is now that thing has logged out the actual user. So that's actually really nice. You can see that I have a sub property, which is that's the ID of the user. We'll use that here in a little bit. I've got a nickname uh, and that's basically just taking like the leading part of this email. And then there's a gravatar associated with this as well. I'm actually wondering if that's just going to be a default avatar. Yeah, so that's the one that uh, Google will kind of give by default or actually that Auth0 will give by default. That was not with Google, that was just through Auth0. So we've got access to our user. Now what we wanna do is actually pass that into our application. So just the same way we did with our initial to-dos up here, now let's just pass in the user as the session. So we'll pass it in as the name user, but it'll be the thing that we got right here as the session. So now, so now up at up top in our application, if we now grab the user property, we should be able to see this in our front end. So let's log out the, the user and we should see that same information be logged out in the console over here. So let's do a refresh and you see our user object is actually showing here. Or actually it has a, the session has a user property. So really what this should be is we should pass in or from this session, we can grab the user and we can pass in that user right here. So now if we refresh this again, we shouldn't see a nested property. We should just see the user logged out over here. All right, so there's all of that information. So now we want to know in our nav bar, we want to know whether or not the user is logged in so that we can determine whether or not to show and hide the login and log out buttons, for example. So we can take our user and just pass it into our nav bar. So now let's open up our nav bar and then we'll need to accept the property of user. And we'll do a little bit of logic in here 
in React to be able to conditionally display the log out button. And then we'll add some more things here in a second. So uh, with our nav bar, if the user is there, then we want to show that log out button. So we'll just move this around here. And if I save and get some auto formatting, that looks a lot better. And then alternatively, if there is not a user, then we want to show the log in button. So we'll just wrap that around the A tag there. So now if we refresh, we should see that login is gone. And then if we click our log out, that should redirect us back to the home page. Oh, and I think we made a little bit too much of an assumption here where in our index file, we try to destructure user directly from the session. But if that property doesn't exist, we'll get an error. So we can update this logic a little bit. So what we can do is we can say session.user, but we can add this question mark, which will say it will use that thing. It will grab the user property of the session object if session is available. And if this thing becomes false, we want to return null. Now, the reason we want to specifically return null is that you cannot pass undefined in JSON to your front end. So in this case, we want to make sure that if it's not there, we return null. So let's come back and let's do a refresh in here. And we should see now that user is coming in null. So we see the login button. And now if we go through that login process again, let's go ahead and log in. We should get redirected back. And now we see that the user is in fact logged in because we see the logout button here. Now that we have authentication set up inside of our Next.js application using Auth0, in the next video, we're gonna look at how to associate the to-do items with a given user.